In part two, we looked at key concepts of queuing theory. In practice, though, for many healthcare systems, we may need to be able to handle more sophistication for realism. So in this video, I want to simply highlight some extended topics. These are to examine networks of queues, issues of time dependency, queues of priorities, and aspects of centralized queue control versus selfish patient behavior. Imagine this network. Patients may join either of the first two queues for service, A or B. This could be based, for example, on their medical need. On completing their service, they can leave the system or may be asked to join the queue for service C. Previously, we considered only single queues, but here we have a network of queues, albeit still relatively simple. One method for examining such systems is Jackson networks. In principle, we model each service channel as an infinite first-come, first-served queue with identical exponential servers. We introduce the concept of load-dependent servers, that is, people can join a queue from outside by arriving into the system, or can join that queue upon completion of another service internally. This requires a routing matrix to describe the probabilities of movement between the queues in the overall system. So for example, if patients arrive following a Poisson process with rate alpha and are routed to service node i with probability p0i then upon completion of service, they can move to node j with probability pij or leave the system with probability pi0. Hence, we can calculate the overall load on node i, which will have an arrival rate made up of both outside and internal arrivals. Then using our existing knowledge of single server queues, we can work out various metrics for the network of queues and say experiment with distributing servers across the system and across each service channel or node to improve overall efficiency and throughput. Another key consideration is time dependency. We have so far assumed steady state conditions using our average arrival and service rates, but of course for many real life healthcare systems they may exhibit time dependencies. Think about looking at the time of day when arrivals occur in the emergency department. There will likely be peaks and troughs throughout the day to reflect the times when accidents occur, say with peaks on Friday and Saturday evenings when more people are in the bars drinking. Likewise, servers could also be time dependent themselves, perhaps with staff being more productive at different times of the day or week, and maybe as a function of how busy the system is. It is well observed, at least here in the UK, for example, that the length of stay in hospitals is correlated to the day of the week if you admit that you're admitted on, given weekend issues with generally less staff and resources. In essence, there are two ways to handle non-stationary processes like this. Again, without going into great detail, they are the SIP approach, which works by segmenting the time into distinct intervals, finding the average arrival rate in each period, and inputting these average rates into a series of stationary MMC finite server system formulas, that is, assuming a state, the system reaches steady state within a particular period. The PSA is effectively a limiting version of the SIP approach, when the period length approaches zero. The primary difference between the methodologies is that whilst the PSA is computed by integrating over time, taking the expectations of, the formula for the stationary performance measures with the arrival rate at each point in time, the SIP averages the arrival rate over the period and thus restricts any changes such as numbers of servers to occur only at the boundary of each period. Many queues can also include patient priorities such as triage whereby those most in medical need will be put to the front of the queue. Analytical and numerical methods to do this exist but when handling several priority classes or more things become tricky. Finally, we may consider patient behaviours and control. Centralised control could be where patients do not have a choice and are directed to a queue, say to make the system equitable and try to reduce variance between the different waiting times. However, individual behaviours could be where patients have a choice of provider and choose which queue to join, or indeed to bulk and not to join the system at all, perhaps to seek alternative care, say private as opposed to public care. Actually, this leads to a fascinating field of research at the intersection of queuing and game theory and principles like the price of anarchy, which considers how selfish, rational users make for busier systems. Such considerations also link neatly to Markov decision processes, or MDPs. Previously, we have looked at discrete Markov chains, which have a set of states and transition probabilities. In order to augment this into an MDP, we include aspects of costs or reward 
and a set of actions associated with each state. That is, a patient can join a particular queue or not, making actions at each state, and evaluating their reward for service, which, for instance, may be a trade-off between the waiting time and the quality of service received. Just to end with, I want to highlight that, of course, we have to handle real-world complexity, making analytical methods explored so far difficult to handle satisfactorily all aspects under consideration. Certainly, though, queuing theory can be highly useful in providing insights into queuing systems, and may well be sufficient depending on the level of detail needed or complexity of the system being modelled. Furthermore, they can act as validation for more sophisticated simulation models of complex processes, such as if we were modelling the spaghetti of patient flows in a hospital department shown here, each server having different service times, different patient and staff behaviours, different medical priorities, classes, time dependencies, and so on. This then leads on to computer simulation, and in particular discrete event simulation, modelling individual patients through queuing systems. In essence, there are four approaches to DES. Event-based, with a calendar of ordered events executed in turn. Activity-based, with a series of conditions that are tested at each time point to see if they are satisfied and then can be scheduled. Three-phase, which takes the best aspects of both event and activity and combines them effectively and process base, which pushes entities through the system until they become blocked and repeatedly test to be able to progress them on. Further details are provided in the accompanying notes, if you're interested. And very finally, to flag up other simulation paradigms. System dynamics is more useful for modelling flows of patients in a system at a higher strategic level of modelling as opposed to operational level queuing models of DES. SD more readily captures causality and feedback. As for other behavioural modelling, agent-based models can be powerful to model autonomous individuals and examine how systems and behaviours evolve, which for example could be particularly useful for social networks and spread of disease type models. Naturally, one can combine techniques for hybridised methods, and this is another interesting and current research topic.